So our next presenter is Arno Kekho. He's the global head of uh, bus division in UITP. Uh, he's a senior trainer on the worldwide basis uh, on the development of UITP training business as well. Thank you, Shritu. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, and, and, and welcome everybody. Pleasure to, uh, to continue the, the round of, of lectures. I'd like to, yeah, to, to share with you uh, yeah, some of the work um, yeah, we have been doing in UITP. Um, from the perspective of the public transport uh, sector. So uh, it's really an association of public transport uh, based in, uh, in Brussels, actually. Um, and um, yeah, working a lot with, uh, with the operators uh, and also the, uh, the authorities and, uh, and manufacturers. And in the frame of, of Solutions Plus, we, uh, how we try to, uh, to share at this occasion some uh, actually of the, uh, well, of, the, of the results of, of a project that we have been uh, doing, still doing, by the way, on, on Assured. And uh, I also tried to gather some experiences from our uh, operating members across, uh, across the planet, you could say, from, from Shenzhen to Moscow to Los Angeles to Paris, London, on uh, actually, uh, yeah, current uh, experiences with the charging uh, technology. So I... I try to focus as much uh, in this presentation on the different uh, bus uh, charging technologies and um, yeah, also share some information on the uh, interoperability uh, uh, protocol. Uh, so I heard in the previous presentations was uh, mentioned a lot and I can add a stone to this uh, building specifically for, uh, for the electric, uh, electric buses. But maybe before, uh, let's say diving into the uh, examples of the charging technology uh, i just wanted to start you with sort of lexicon uh, on uh, more on the on the terminology around uh, charging uh, because what we what we observed is uh, in many many cases when a, a bus fleet or when a city starts plans to electrify uh, public transport yeah there is a whole series of stakeholders uh, concerned, not only the operator, but also the town hall and the city, uh, public transport authority, uh, different, uh, I would say, actors uh, like the, the grid, uh, grid supplier industries. Uh, so it's always important to have um, yeah, same, I would say, level, uh, the level playing field if, if, if you talk about uh, the concept. So if we are talking here about the charging technologies, um, so we will mainly uh, let's say focus and, and describe uh, the different technologies uh, that uh, that are today uh, on the market for, for electrification of, uh, of buses. Whereas as we uh, talk about the charging strategies, it's much more an approach from the from the operator uh, on the questions on, on where uh, where to charge uh, the buses, uh, how uh, how to charge the buses. So it is linked, of course, to the technologies and also when to charge the buses during a, during a day, during an operations day or maybe uh, during the night. So these two uh, elements, I would say, I will try to, to, to detail them further a bit in, uh, in my presentation. But maybe to start with the strategies um, already, uh, yeah, important to make this distinction between what we say opportunity charging and, uh, and depot or overnight charging, uh, where we clearly distinguish uh, also different cities, different operators that have strong preferences for uh, for strategy uh, where the buses are charged during the night. Uh, so during the non-service hours of the public transport buses, always taking place at the, at the depot uh, and where the buses are yeah, charge a slow, uh, slow speed, and where the charging infrastructure is also located at the uh, at the depot or at the bus bus carriage, uh, and then the other uh, strategy uh, that is commonly I would say observed across different uh, also members of UITP is the opportunity charging, uh, which takes place during uh, the public tra transport services during the day and during the service uh, timetable. And this can take place either on the on the bus 
route uh, at the terminal, for instance, or even at the, at the stop. And we'll show some examples later. But it can also take place in an, uh, yeah, in a uh, bus depot or charging hub. Huh? So the buses can can leave the line, be opportunity charged uh, at at the spots, and and go back to service. So these are, I would say, uh, yeah, two two. two basic strategies uh, to, to distinguish and I will show you um, also some examples of uh, yeah, combinations of those two strategies. Um, what we have been focusing on in the uh, assured project, actually European uh, funded project, uh, was specifically on the high power charging uh, vehicles, heavy duty vehicles, so there's a truck part and the bus part and RITP we are working on the coordination of uh, of the bus part uh, where we have been working on specifically uh, the interface and between on the one hand electric bus and on the other hand the charging uh, the charging uh, infrastructure and the way how those two elements uh, yeah, are interfaced together um, so we make here a schema of uh, four the different uh, charging interfaces on the left, uh, I suppose, well known. It's the it's the plug. It's the combo two plug. So it's a manual connection uh, to plug uh, well to plug in the bus as an, as an inlet. And uh, of course, these plugs and those inlets they need to be uh, compatible uh, for uh, well for different buses and also for different uh, different plug uh, makes. And uh, although there are solutions coming in the market now where this is automized, where you have also robots. Uh, this is mainly still used today as a manual, manual solution. And then we have in the in the box here, uh, in this this, yeah, this, this round, round square, three, three other solutions, which we call the automatic uh, connection devices. So the ACDs, and these are uh, yeah, connection charging interfaces that are automized, so there's no manual intervention at all. Uh, maybe to start in the middle, here we call this the, the roof mounted uh, ACD or roof mounted pantograph. It's fairly uh, similar, like a, you maybe know from a tramway uh, where the, the device is mounted on the roof and it is charged, uh, it's going up to a uh, piece of infrastructure. On the left side, it's a, it's a variant. Uh, it's called the infrastructure mounted pantograph and uh, on the right side we have a solution which is coming from underneath from under from in the ground and it is connecting to the to the underside of the, of the bus so these three are um, yeah, automatic connection devices and i should say uh, maybe interesting for the specialists and the audience that the roof mounted pantograph on in the middle here and uh, the very left, so the the, the plug, uh, the manual plug, it's absolutely the same uh, technology in terms of, uh, well, you mentioned it, four separated uh, pins, uh, so it's, it's the same uh, standard and it's the same interface, it's only, let's say, presented uh, differently. A um, few examples uh, from those automated connection devices. So type, the type A you see here, it is the uh, infrastructure mounted uh, solution, also called the inverted pantograph in this uh, contrast with, uh, with the, the roof mounted pantograph. And you will see here a very nice example of uh, the EBSF2 project, so European Bus System of the Future project, so a project that UITP coordinated, finished some years ago. And where you see a very nice application of, uh, of an electric bus uh, entering in the built environment, and where uh, where, where the pantograph uh, is let's say mounted on the on the infrastructure side, uh, so it's very uh, aesthetic uh, solution. Of course, you need uh, you don't need a pantograph on the bus, so it's an advantage. It's a little bit lighter, but you do need uh, yeah reliable charging poles uh, across uh, the city along the bus lines to, uh, to be able to, uh, to recharge the batteries. So type A, uh, and then if we go through this schema of uh, automatic connection devices, we go to the type B, which is the roof uh, mounted pantograph. So here you see in a, yeah, a picture from uh, 
uh, one of the partners in this Azure project, so UITP member uh, TMB uh, in, uh, in, in Spain, where you see very nice uh, detail here of the is this, this triangle, which is the hood uh, where uh, the, uh, uh, the pantograph is uh, connected to. Uh, and uh, yeah, the, all the buses uh, of the line uh, need to be equipped, obviously, with, uh, with this pantograph. And um, yeah, we have also here a nice example, maybe for uh, getting back on the on the on these charging technologies and the charging strategies, as I mentioned uh, at the opening. Uh, it is not uh, so that it is absolutely necessary to to go for either one or the other technology. Right? We have uh, examples uh, enough here. This is an example from the Netherlands, uh, from from the place where my predecessor was uh, speaking from. Uh, actually, in Eindhoven, in the, in the southern part, where the operator has chosen for a combination of uh, technologies, namely Type B, so you see, you see the, the roof-mounted pantograph, and also uh, yeah, a traditional uh, plug inlet and combo combo uh, charging in, on the bus. So two technologies, but also a mixed. Uh, charging strategy, and uh, it is also very nice to, let's say, to to see here on the scheme. So there is possibility on the left to, to charge the bus on the route uh, uh, with an uh, with a pantograph. You see, and this can be done in, uh, with a fast charging technology. Uh, and if you go into the to the right of that uh, scheme, so where you have the two the two bubbles, uh, it is a strategy still of charging on the on the network. But where the actually the vehicles are uh, swapped, meaning the, the, the empty vehicle uh, with empty batteries is going out of service to be recharged uh, at a certain speed, and a new vehicle is being injected uh, on the on the line to replace that vehicle. So it's the vehicle swapping uh, strategy that is also applied uh, in conjunction with uh, with the others. And then on the in, on the right side of this scheme, you see. Uh, also a, a depot uh, in the bubble and the, the buses, uh, some of the buses are recharged quickly uh, on, the, yeah, on the premises of the depot to go back in service afterwards and then during the night uh, when the buses are out of service they are plugged uh, like uh, with, with the manual plug on the, on the network and they are charged uh, at slow uh, speed. So a combination of technologies and strategies in one single operation. And last but not least, to complete this picture of um, automatic connection devices, there is the third type C, uh, which is underneath. Uh, so it is quite innovative uh, technology still emerging. Uh, I must say this, this is only a picture from a pilot project in uh, Malaga, Spain, uh, from, uh, from a bus manufacturer, I think from Finland and and uh, uh, charging technology from Alstom. Uh, it is for a moment stopped, so the test is over. And uh, yeah, we read in the press last week that uh, in, uh, in Paris, uh, Ile de France Mobilité is, uh, has decided to equip uh, two of their future BRT bus lines with this uh, type C charging technology. So we are very eager also at UITP to follow the developments of the experiences with uh, this technology. Um, yeah, um, back to the charging uh, strategies uh, after uh, sort of a quick, uh, quick scan of the uh, of the automatic connection devices. So I put them here again on the on the on the sheet. But maybe not necessary to elaborate too much on that. We have been discussing it. Uh, in previous sessions as well, overnight charging, opportunity charging. Uh, I added here the flash charging, which is, uh, let's say, uh, yeah, quite separate technology with very high power uh, charging and very short uh, uh, charging times for the buses, uh, which we have seen in operation in, in, in a city like Geneva or Nantes in France. And then also uh, specific I would say charging strategy linked to the technology of trolley buses. And so we have still uh, 300 uh, trolley bus cities uh, in operations uh, across the world. Uh, and this technology is also innovating with, uh, yeah, with possibilities to add 
battery pack in a trolley bus, which is charged during uh, operations uh, on the trolley, trolley line and which can run uh, I would say, yeah, offline uh, of charging wires for, uh, for several kilometers. So it's a kind of different technology, but also part of the uh, overview of strategies. Um, yeah, maybe uh, interesting also a window here from uh, maybe more from a manufacturing perspective. It's Heliox, uh, one of the charging infrastructure uh, builders. Uh, so here another approach. You could say, okay, if you would uh, simply focus on the place of operations, either in the depot or on, on, the, on the line, you could say, okay, from, from the depot charging, there is also a whole range of technologies available. And you can uh, charge in the depot with, with the plug. Uh, if, if you have the charging infrastructure, you can charge in the depot with the automatic connection devices, either with the pantograph on the roof or with the pantograph down. Uh, it doesn't matter really, because this technology uh, is compatible with, uh, with the place where, where you charge here at the depot. Of course, for the opportunity charging on routes, uh, this manufacturing is proposing let's say, the technology with the pantograph up or down uh, can be chosen. And then uh, on the right side, I already gave the example of the Netherlands. Uh, this technology uh, can be uh, combined in a network in, in a city where you have both the depot charging, opportunity charging mixed uh, according to the best, uh, I would say, operational needs of, uh, of the network and, and the city. Um, in a nutshell, uh, try to summarize here uh, yeah, some key characterizations of, uh, of each of the uh, uh, charging uh, strategies. Uh, overnight charging, so at, uh, at night, slow charging. Uh, what you see here is the key, key characterization is that you need uh, yeah, lots of batteries uh, on board of the bus. Uh, um, we, we know, or maybe you, you do know that the average uh, mileage uh, of, a, of a bus uh, during a, an operational day can be around 200, 250, sometimes more kilometers. And of course, this uh, need to be carried on board of, uh, of the bus. So high uh, battery capacity and also linked to the charging uh, technology, uh, yeah, you need to have the right adopted uh, chemistry of, uh, bus, of the batteries. So this is another, say, another module of uh, the training, I suppose, but there's lots of development and uh, uh, innovation also going on in the chemistry uh, development of uh, of the battery types. So batteries are charged from the grid only while buses are stationary at the depot. And uh, yeah, for every feasibility study for electrification, it's important to to make this uh, trade off and between the, the passenger capacity, the transport capacity of the bus, and uh, yeah, the battery size that you want to uh, embark on the, on the buses. And uh, yeah, as a typical energy consumption uh, we observe, uh, I would say, across uh, across the UITP membership from the operators around 1 to 1 1.2 uh, kilowatt hours uh, per kilometer for a standard bus without, and it's important to mention, uh, counting the, let's say, the thermal comfort, uh, so the heating or cooling during uh, winter or uh, summer days. Um, similarly, uh, for I say the uh, the depot charging there's an illustration here from uh, from the Scandinavian country. I think it's from Sweden. So depot charging it's with a plug. Well, actually here you see uh, two plugs, where uh, the bus is simply uh, yeah charged uh, during non-service hour at the bus. Uh, sorry, at the at the bus garage. Yeah, uh, a plug, manual plug, but it can also uh, be done with a similar. Uh, with functionality, but without uh, without manual plug, and then the buses are here charged with this automatic connection device. So the second strategy is opportunity charging. Uh, main uh, characteristic here is then immediately that there is the need for smaller uh, batteries. So this is very interesting for for the operator. Uh, we are talking about 
battery capacity between 60 to 150 kilowatt hours. And again, also with adopted uh, battery chemistry that can support the, uh, the charging uh, speeds and the, the charging frequencies. Of course, those buses have shorter uh, autonomy, so they need to be organized in a, and they need to be planned in a way that they can be recharged during uh, bus operations. And also here, the batteries are charged from the grid only while the buses are static, uh, so stopped at the, at the terminals. And of course, when buses are stopped, this has also an impact on the, yeah, on the economics of operations as the driver, of course, who is waiting will still have to be uh, paid as a, as a staff resource. Uh, for the flash charging, uh, so highly uh, high power technology and kind of yeah, special, uh, special solution, uh, 600 kilowatt uh, for charging power and very short uh, charging time, so it can be done really at the bus stop. Uh, and recently, the BRT system in Nantes, in France, uh, had equipped their uh, line, a very high capacity line, with double articulated buses with this technology uh, that is uh, proposed by ABB and HES from Switzerland. Uh, and last but not least, uh, emotion charging for trolley buses. So it is uh, an existing uh, electric bus technology, I would say for uh, about a century, uh, where uh, yeah, this specific innovation uh, is going on on what we call the in-motion charging, IMC. So where the buses can, uh, can run uh, offline off, the, off uh, the charging wires with, uh, with a battery, battery pack. And we see quite a lot of uh, cities actually that have trolley bus systems in operations, be it in uh, Shanghai or Beijing, but also recently we had a presentation in the trolley bus committee from Mexico City, where they uh, reinvest uh, in the fleet renewal of trolley buses and where they adopt this IMC technology. So all in all, there's lots of uh, yeah, technology available on the market. Um, the project focused a lot on the interoperability of those uh, yeah, charging uh, solutions uh, for for let's say a specific bus operator bus fleet because uh, yeah, you should know that uh, bus fleets are often very large uh, we, we talk about nine thousand buses in london or four thousand buses in paris uh, and the, the fleets they are renewed i would say with a natural pace so every every year a certain batch of buses are uh, renewed and of course over time you you want to have also stability that, uh, that the future buses uh, are still compatible with uh, the charging infrastructure. So what we call, they need to be able to be uh, mixed and they need to match uh, between uh, between the different brands. And we, uh, yeah, as a sort of deliverable, we produced uh, a video, which is a two minutes, two minutes video, uh, how to, let's say, show the, exactly the, the highlights of the benefits of this interoperability uh, yeah, requirement and how to assure this in, um, in the procurement and the operations of uh, electric buses. And if, uh, if, if, uh, time, if left, time left, uh, Shir Tu, uh, I would like to ask you to, to play the, the clip. It's, uh, yes. it's a two minutes yeah, it's, clip that we just released yesterday. Thank you so much, Arno. The, the video is ready. Like, yeah. Thank you and interoperability of electric vehicles and chargers are key for the large-scale deployment of electric fleets in cities. When interoperability is guaranteed, operators can mix and match different brands of vehicles and chargers. This makes their integration into transport networks easier and less costly. However, the standardization of e-bus charging has not yet been fully achieved and official standards are still not released. To support the work of standardization bodies worldwide, the EU-funded project Assured has defined a set of standards and protocols which now make it possible to test interoperability, guaranteeing flexible and cost-effective e-bus operations. Let us show you how. Assured brings together stakeholders from the entire transport and energy supply sectors across the European Union. By considering their different needs and interests, 
Assured creates innovative, fast-charging solutions for a more diverse and flexible electric vehicle market. During the project, electric buses, trucks and vans test different types of charging solutions. Here, the effects of mass deployment on the grid are also considered. Let's have a look at what solutions are tested in Assured. Next to the already standardized plug manual charging solution, in Assured, three types of so-called automated connection devices for ultra-fast charging have been further developed and standardized. This means that buses and chargers using the same technology can work together, independent of the brand. This solution consists of a pantograph installed within the charging station. The setup requires wireless communication, and the charging starts when the pantograph has made contact to the vehicle top rails. This solution simplifies the vehicle structure. The downside is that a single pantograph failure can affect multiple vehicles. This solution places the pantograph on top of the bus, so it reduces the cost of the charging infrastructure, both along the route and at the depot. The roof-mounted pantograph is currently the most common charging solution in Europe. However, the pantograph might add some weight, height and cost to the vehicle. Here, a current collector fitted underneath the vehicle lowers automatically and contacts the pads embedded in the ground at the bus stop to start the charging. The setup is using wireless communication and three contact pads. This innovative solution is further developed within Assured and has seen a successful pilot in another project. Assured is also testing wireless fast charging for vans. This technology can be useful for freight operators, as the charging can happen automatically while parking or during pickup and delivery service. By creating widely applicable and flexible charging solutions, Assured unites the interests of many different players and adapts to the diverse needs of operators and existing infrastructures of European cities. This way, Assured takes standardization to the next level making one great leap forward towards sustainable urban mobility. Thank you very much, Ardo, for explaining several options of e-bus charging.